Oh, um, I would like to uh, show you an extension that I made together with Sigrid Kramlinger uh, called, it's called D2 Profiles. And it's uh, a way to make Joomla easier. Can you hear me by the way? Yes, loud yeah. and clear. Okay, and the sheets are also clear? Visible? Yes, they're lovely, yeah. Yeah, really okay. Nice. So uh, Sigrid from Austria, um, she is a, a, yeah, a Joomla developer just like me. And we both have the same um, opinion about uh, how you should create websites. And uh, we both like to stick to the, to the core, as uh, use as much of, as Joomla as possible, and only use third party extensions um, yeah, when there is no alternative. So in 2018, uh, we joined together uh, to uh, start a service called Data2EU. It's a processing index for the GDPR. And uh, when we worked on that, we also looked at Joomla and we thought, okay, Joomla is maybe a bit difficult for new users, at, at least that's what uh, all the WordPress people say. And uh, we think that Joomla is really flexible and uh, one of the strengths is it's flexible, but because of the flexibility, you have too many options. So uh, I, I, in the past, I tried to do stuff with uh, the, the ACL, AC, AC, ACL to limit choices for users and uh, also uh, to create menus with limited choices and uh, but how to make Joomla even more easier. So we came up for uh, when, when we were still with Joomla 3, we came up with D2 content, which is a copy of com content, but then you can create all uh, profiles with it. Uh, however, we had issues with the Joomla categories and it didn't work with Uteam Pro, which we uh, both use a lot. So uh, when then we started with a new uh, extension called D2 Profiles, it has the same functionality. Um, and it's a, you have a package and when you install it, you have an administrator component to create and manage profiles. Then you have a system plugin uh, that will load the D2 Profile plugins. And then we have D2 profile plugins at the moment, just one called content. And um, yeah, with that, you can uh, change the, the backend of Joomla article edit. So when you want to create easier content, um, you can uh, reduce choices by uh, hide the options tab in Joomla. You can create template overrides and you can uh, use a, a content plugin to override fields. But if you do, it's for everyone that uses the website. And if you want to make um, a distinguish, if you want to distinguish different users, different categories, then uh, these are no options. And therefore we came uh, with, with uh, yeah, D2 profiles. Um, so yeah, let's let just, uh, I, I just show it to you. So I have to go to a website. Here I have a website. Uh, the website is called Initech, and this is it. So we have a team page, and we have, uh, yeah, that's that's basically it. So if a, a regular user uh, wants to open uh, the article about it, they open it, and they can uh, change one of the names. They can create a, a profile here. Um, they have an image of this person, except this is just how Joomla works, which is great. And the options and the publishing, you can all switch those off for the whole site. So what we did, we also like intro images because when you have intro images, uh, you can uh, create better websites because then you know that uh, all people click on images. But in Joomla, you cannot see if uh, articles have images. So what we did, we created D2 profiles, which uh, exists of uh, profiles, a system plugin, and also uh, profile plugins. In this case, first I have to switch on the system plugin. Now it's active. If I go to uh, articles, still you don't st still see don't see anything. So I go back to components. 
D2 profiles to the dashboard because I also have to enable a D2 profiles for articles. This is to co for the content. And now it's enabled. Oh yeah, I can also here say, I would like to show intro images in the, in the articles overview, or I can hide it, I can show it, or I can put the placeholder in it. If you have maybe 100 images, 100 articles with 100 images, and all those images are really large, then it will take a lot of time to load all those in the back end. And therefore, it's better to show the placeholder. So I will show the placeholder first. I will open a new tab because that's easier. And here I will go to the articles. So now you can see I have articles with images. And this image, for instance, is really big, the printer fixed image. So when I set it to show, you can see that it's, uh, you can see the images that are, uh, yeah, with those um, articles. So, but this is not the, the main part of the extension. The main part of the extension is that you can uh, create profiles. So um, I have one profile here called uh, profiles article. Oh, sorry. I have one profile here called news profile. And when you have a new profile, uh, it's assigned to a component, to a client and to a few. And you can also assign it to user groups or and or to categories. What you do, you create a couple of tabs or maybe just one. Uh, you can create field sets and then you start creating the fields. For instance, if I would like to have another field here, like the node, I can just click somewhere and I have here select field and here it says node and I can say, okay, put it on the right. And then okay, I can say it's safe. This one is uh, assigned to news. So if I go to uh, articles and I go to a news article, you can see that uh, it looks different now. Uh, here I have, um, I have the note field. Oh, here I have the note field. And I can even, if I go back, if I want to have the note field, because it's really important to have a note for articles, maybe for news articles, I can also say it's required. And now the note field is required. If I try to save it, you can see, please fill in this field. So uh, you can override uh, yeah, what Joomla wants with, with stuff. Um, <clears throat> so uh, maybe uh, I want to have uh, export this one because I want to use it on, on another website. I can use, just do export and now I have a JSON file uh, this JSON file explains uh, how the profile looks like. Um, the only thing is it doesn't have um, custom fields in it. I mean, custom fields are really, uh, they're not basic Joomla. They're made by users of a website. So you don't know which custom fields are on another website if you, ex if you try to import your stuff on another website. So the extension this is a commercial extension. And how... Oh, Um, you can get it uh, at uh, data blue site. And there we also have some example profiles. For instance, we have uh, all the Joomla four fields, or we have the CO profile. So for instance, if I go back, I now have the news profile. Maybe I want to import the CO profile. And I go to downloads, uh, downloads, it's this one. So now I have a SEO profile, which is imported, and I might able, I might give it to the, um, uh, yeah, for instance, to the uh, marketing department. Uh, this profile has a content tab, left and right, and a couple of fields that are important for, uh, for SEO, like uh, the meta description. I mean, the meta description is not really important for uh, the search ranking but it gives some information. It might display it on the, on, the, on the search page. So if I go, let's go to another browser because in the other browser, I have a user uh, called Mark. This user 
uh, I only assigned the content, the uh, modules of Amida Media, and also the redirects to, uh, to this user group. So if this person goes to the user group and it creates a new article, you can see here that this is the SEO profile. And it doesn't display it here. So um, oh. um, let's go back to the website. Let's go back to uh, the plugin. So I have to go to uh, components, data profiles, dashboard. Um, this is the profile plugin. And here I can say, okay, I want the debug mode on. And if I go back to uh, the website here and I refresh, then I can see here that this is the SEO profile. So uh, this is uh, handy uh, when you have to debug stuff because this, this uh, it, when this uh, group, which is the marketing group, when it um, uses a, a something from the news category, this SEO profile will be used. Um, but if I, uh, I am not in that category, so if I go to uh, content articles, I'm just a super user. If I open uh, something in a news article, and now you can see it's the news profile, which is not the SEO profile because the news profile is assigned to this category. And the SEO profile was assigned to a group and the news profile uh, yeah, worked for me and the other one for the other uh, group. So you can have multiple um, uh, yeah, profiles for multiple groups and multiple categories. Um, yeah, are there any questions? Go to me, is there an order of precedence? So if I'm a super user and I assign myself two different profiles, yeah, which one would it be? Just the order that they're in the back end? Actually, it's the same like uh, how JCE works. Um, it looks in the back end and um, profiles. So it will take this order from, uh, so the news profile will be loaded first when uh, when it's when I when it fits me, in this case it's it, um, the the CEO profile. It's for uh, the marketing department because the user group is marketing department. But if I have some um, some other uh, yeah, it, it 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 fits the the, the order of the how it, how it finds it in the back end. It takes the first that fits. Okay, first that fits right. Because you think Pro does. With their template system it's the last that fits okay so, so and in um if you go to uh jc editor and you have profiles and it's also the first that fits mm. interesting so um you mentioned um you team pro so uh yeah i'm also a fan of you team pro so let's switch on you team pro and if I go to the website now, oh, this is the other website. If I go to the website now, it looks different. And if I go to services, oh, there is not much here. If I go to team, um, the, um, this, this is the, um, the news. If, if I create something in the news, uh, I get this profile. Uh, I can add some information here. I can add an image here. Uh, I can do everything here, what I want. And I, I don't have to do anything with Uteam Pro. But if I uh, want to change the news category, because I don't like how it looks like, yeah, I can just uh, create a new template. Uh, And well, let's just get something from the library. Um, th these are posts, post, post, index. They changed it a bit. <laughs> I have to look at index. Yeah, just this one. Oh, I have to assign it. I don't want to assign it. I don't have the time now here. So um, yeah. It, it, it works with uh, with Uteam Pro. The, the previous version for Juno 3 didn't work with Uteam Pro. So that was really annoying. And, uh, and therefore we changed uh, the way it works. 
So, and that's what you'll switch there, the Uthium Pro um, button is, is it? Actually, um, we have to look into that. Um, the, it's indeed a switch, Uthium Pro template. And that was because in uh, the, with version three of Uthium Pro, um, the editor looked really weird. So uh, when you went to the editor, you had some, uh, some something here and also something here, which didn't look good. And therefore, uh, yeah, we added the switch that we uh, could switch the, the layout to use, uh, I think, Bootstrap 4 uh, with Uteam Pro. Right. That is really useful. It's kind of, it's, it's a, an automated version of what Sander did eight years ago when he asked his um, partner to do an article and then simplified it with the overrides. Yeah, and but you literally made a, a, a programmable what version of that with Profiles. Yeah, uh, what he did was uh, really nice with, with template overrides. And um, our extension works with a plugin that changes the XML of the, of the form. So um, let me show you. Uh, so I have this. Uh, Presentation because I don't know it. Oh, this is not the right one. Presentations, this one, uh, how to make you easy for customers. And then in this presentation, I have, I have the content. I have to go to the template override, but I have to go to the plugin. Um, here it is. So uh, I created a plugin. This plugin is just really small and it has some, some code that changes the XML of a form. However, uh, it's not as user friendly as D2 profiles because this, this one, uh, yeah, you have to program all the, the groups yourself and what you want to hide or what you want to uh, make required. You have to do it your, all your, by yourself. So it's not really if you have to do it yourself, it's it's much more work. Um, the extension, uh, we, we made a ex uh, commercial extension out of it. We are using it for our, our, own, our own customers, but um, yeah, it was really a lot, lot of work um, to, to develop. And therefore we uh, yeah, created it as a, a um, how do you say, a commercial extension. And if you buy it, you can use it on all your clients' websites. Um, it works with tokens, so when you create it, uh, when you create a new website where you want to use it, you just generate a token on our website in your own account, and you can put uh, put that token in um, in a component as as a key. So uh, when there is an update, uh, it will use Joomla's update update mechanism. And when your customer is not your customer anymore, you can just switch off, uh, yeah, the, the the token for that customer uh, yeah. in to site.com. I, I see secrets <laughs> raised, and so um, I think you've got a question <laughs> from your colleague. No, okay. I just wanted to, to like give an example. Like um, I, I of course use T2 profiles too, uh, especially when I use Uteam because uh, customers always destroy Uteam mm -hmm. templates and builders. So I only work with dynamic content and they just get custom fields. So they get like for recipes, they get a, a, a profile where they just see like the ingredients and the cooking time and stuff. And they don't see all the other fields. And um, so that's where it helps a lot. And if they add a recipe, then they just have the recipe fields. If they add an, a, a news article, they will have the fields for the news article. So um, then they cannot um, destroy <laughs> YouTube templates and build other pages anymore. And also to um, declutter the backend, so to make it easier for the people to find their way. So, because you can really hide all the fields, you don't need them. Can you, uh, um, yeah, um, it's interesting. So, I mean, you could always limit the custom fields by, uh, to categories uh, in custom fields. But I'd never considered it in Utheme Pro because I don't really get my clients to go into that. So you're saying your clients launch Utheme Pro and then break the templates? Yes. 
Wow. Okay. But you could always, okay, so you could always put them in as an administrator. Yeah. I mean, sometimes if they only go in the builder, that's usually okay. But if they go um, to the complete U team settings mm. and also go to templates and there's dynamic content, they don't understand that. Yeah. And so I, I try to avoid it now. Um, maybe for some specific pages, they know they could use the builder and then they will see it if they open it. But in general, I don't let them into the, the uh, U team anymore. <laughs> I had some bad experience. <laughs> yeah, no, I can I can understand. One of the things I do like about um, when you're doing a page with Builder is version control works really well. So when a client's gone into a particular article and screwed the Builder on that, um, I can miraculously restore it just by using yes. version control. And that's a real life server. But of course, the template, what we tend to do is we export templates or we put them into the custom template area. Um, so we export the builder, but yeah, you're quite right. I'd, yeah, that'd be interesting to play with and see. Hmm. Yeah, I just had a, um, it's like an insurance company and they have like 21 products and they have 21 articles just with custom fields. And they're all uh, mapped to dynamic content in new team, but they only see the custom fields. So they just fill out the fields, don't yeah. have to care about it. So that, that works really nice with teacher profiles. So have you stopped them seeing content? What do you mean article text? So can you actually do this so you couldn't see content? Yes. Yes. Oh, well, now this was a massive debate I had with Sander at Journal Day Netherlands, uh, where you were there as well, Peter, and he was saying the problem is that, you know, you think that, sorry, not you think, that Joomla, it would be really brilliant if you could switch that off because not everything needs content. Let's say you're doing... Um, a uh, calendar, uh, uh, an events thing, you may not need the content. You may need just the dates and, and a title and, and a picture. Um, you team, it turns it off anyway, right? It puts the builder button there. Yes, but the, the, when the people fill out the article, they will see all the text, the text always first. And yeah. if it's empty, it looks strange. So you can yes. hide it with T2 profiles. You just show them the custom fields they need. That is really good. Yeah, that really is really good. good. Can you export to another site? Import and export. The profiles you can import and export. Nice. So you can set up one profile and use it on, on other sites as well. You just have to remap the custom fields because they're different on, on yeah. different sites. Peter showed that, but was saying that the, that yeah. the it's the custom fields that's the issue. Um, so yeah, interesting. Oh, I have this look no content. I will put to the uh, quality say and now it's the question if I if I open that I, I added it to uh, quality focused no no quality focused so I'll put it here quality focused all right so open it here um, oh is, what is this news profile ah. Um, then I have to, maybe it's different. You know what? I just looked at no content is the one that I will just want to show. So if I open this one, um, oh, I have one field that's not assigned. So let me check. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, I have to do something here first because you have to assign or everything. Otherwise, uh, yeah, it doesn't it show. Does, yeah. So uh, now I don't have any content. Wow. So if I create a new one, oh, I have to. Hold on. Oh, wait, right. I have to save it first. Uh, so this article doesn't have any content, but uh, I think um, uh, when you save an article just in, in the regular Joomla, so when I switch this whole uh, extension off, so I go to the uh, system plugin and I just switch everything off. So if I go to content, I can just write something without putting anything in the article. So uh, that's also just, this is just Joomla. Hmm. And then 
then you only put the custom fields in your uh, in your stuff, but you still have the, the, the this this page. And uh, we do the profiles. You can just yeah lay out uh, yeah how, how how you would like to see it. Well, the other one to hide is permissions, because yes, clients but, don't often want to see it, even if they're no, super admins. No, but you can switch it off. I mean, mm. you don't you don't need uh, this extension for that. Um, uh, hold on, no, it's not here. Uh, edit layout. Uh, it says article permissions show. Yeah. yeah. So if I have an article now, it doesn't show it, but it's for the for everybody, even yes. for me as a super administrator. Yeah. Go on, Laurie, put your hand up. Hi, this is a really fun tool. Um, but here's my question. If, if I were to use this on a site and I have 120 sites, the problem is, is the, with the custom fields, if the field, I'm just throwing this out there. If the field alias is the same, if there was a way your tool had the intelligence to find the field based on the alias instead of the ID number, because obviously we all know the ID number is going to be different in different sites. So if this was truly portable from site to site, now not everyone has the same situation as I do where I have 120 Joomla websites all with the same template, all with a similar thing, but obviously the field IDs would be different. So to use this tool, it would be interesting if there was a way that it could go off of the field alias, which I know would be a tremendous change. I'm not saying that would be easy, but I'm just throwing that out there um, because with this limitation, it means it would have to be literally rebuilt. I know you just have to select all the fields, but it would have to be redone for each site. So I'm just throwing it out there. Again, not a, you know, that would be really difficult to do. But anyway, it's very cool. Thank you. Interesting question. Yes. Um, I've written it down and uh, Sigrid and I uh, will look into it. I can, I have another showcase if you want. Please. Yeah. Um, so I will share my screen. I have to stop sharing. Uh, are you sharing now and I'm not sharing again? Yeah, I'm sharing. So um, that's still in development. That's this insurance company and they have like these products and they have one, it's in German, but that's a, like a home insurance for, for your own home. So they have this title, they have the first slogan, they have a text, they have a button, they have an image. They have these three um, boxes here. Um, they have three steps, how to get there. They have a contact person. And what we did uh, with the profiles, so if I get here into the, where's the home? Um, this one is the, the home insurance. So I have all this tab and they go from top to bottom. So that's the first um the first slogan which was this one so then they have the title they have the first box they have the first button would be here um they have then they have tags and meta description and stuff and the intro image and then they have the the next text so that would be the next text box so i i went from top that so that would be this text then i have the three questions um so i have a, a sub form with the three fields so that's the first question so that's the if you're in here about the number, so that would be this one here. So I really just give them the fields um, and the steps, they can use them. They can override them if they want, but they don't have to. Um, they can use the, they can use the persons um, and they can use this. Um, also there's a button they want to show or not. That would be this one down here. So, um, yeah, I just uh, guide them from top to bottom and they just um, have to fill all these fields uh, by each other. So that's, that's the secret. FAQs. Secret. That is really did, nice. Did you use the, the conditional fields also here already? Yes, I use conditional fields, it works. I can turn that off and on. So if I don't want to show this VFOX section, I just hide it and they don't fill in the fields. Um, that would be the section here this one here so and that's why i don't let them into the builder 
Um, no, that's really beautiful yeah. because it's literally the flow that they need to do. So it's very clear what each tab is. Yes. Um, and I'm really pleased to use the additional fields, um, which Olivier brought in um, from someone else's talk in Joomla London. And I went to Olivier and said, I, in fact, it was Mark. So Mark's talk, I saw that you could do conditional fields, it wasn't in Joomla proposed yeah. a plugin and then Olivia said no it's just a simple simple change and added it in so all these things are coming together which is lovely which is really nice it's making yeah. it so much more um complex but in a simple way with the conditional fields they've just got to say yes or no and suddenly yeah. a whole load of things disappears and I also have here it's another uh, website where I used to I have like for books um, they would just have the a book and they have just the, the, the content and the, the book cover. They don't need any other fields. I usually have on the details, you can change to another category or whatever, but uh, basically they just have to fill out these two fields and that's it. And for um, for events, uh, they have more fields. So they have, the, they have also like an intro text, uh, um, who's doing it. They have the start states, the end states, and the... The, the email address and stuff so for uh, that's different so that's a different profile for a different category see that's really nice yeah i mean i do the same thing but of course it's a tab within a load of other tabs um to be able to hide all this stuff that's not needed is really yeah. nice so that's wow the... well done you two when, when we uh, worked on this uh, we found out some really weird things in joomla for instance never <laughs> <laughs> Um, when um, let's assume that you have uh, uh, one kind of article like news articles and the marketing department can do some fields and another department like uh, the legal department can do some other fields so uh, when you don't show the fields in Joomla when for instance you have a plugin that hides it uh, then you will lose them if the other uh, team will edit the same article because Joomla only saves the article that's are in the in the form and when they are not shown in the form, uh, it's not saved. So we had to take a uh, workaround for that and we solved that. And another thing is with dates. Um, we ran into a really weird issue and then it, uh, we found out that uh, it's the date format. Um, if you have the date format for instance in German or in English, um, yeah, you, you will have weird things when you don't show uh, the fields. And we also solved that. So. Yeah, we found uh, weird things in Joomla. Yep. Well, well done. It's brilliant. I can see that. I, I didn't realize that. So that's really interesting. You're editing the same article, different permissions. You'll literally overwrite the different bits. Very interesting. So you have to literally pull in the whole thing and hide it and then resave it when you do the different profiles? No, no we, don't we don't show it in the form. Because if you do, uh, people can uh, look into the HTML and save uh, change it over there. So we took took another approach. Okay, got a secret source. No, no, no. If if you have to extend, you can look into it. Yeah. Uh, it's because how plugins are uh, how plugins work. You have on after initialize, on after route. Of course, yes. And we 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 just uh, get it on some place yeah. and then merge everything uh, when we yeah. see. It. You see that? Yeah, that's very clever. And Fred, yeah, uh, we talked a lot about custom fields, and this is more a general question. Is there any way um, to export custom fields to, for instance, a, a, a PDF file or a CHV or an Excel file? Yes, if you use... Um the tool that Mark was talking about, which is Roland's. I'm pretty sure you can export uh, the custom fields with that. I missed the presentation of uh, Mark, unfortunately. Sorry for that. Well, it's okay, because in about a year's time, we'll have the video <laughs> ready. Um, Roland's, um, oh, I can't remember what it's called. R-O-C-S-V-I. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Peter, you're muted. Yeah, it was, it's from Roland Dahlmill there. The RO subscription. Oh, okay. Our RO CSV uh, import. Okay. 
I, I, and, I, will, I will check at Roland. Uh, uh, and, RolandDD.com. Yeah. And if you want to like export it to PDF, you could, there's Foca PDF, I think you can do stuff with that. Uh, but you would have to show it at least in a hidden uh, front end item, I think. But then you can create PDF files. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna gonna play uh, with it. Thank you, uh, Ian. <laughs> That's brilliant. That's a really nice tool. So I'm taking it's on the jet. Have you got a link on the jet for us? Yeah. Um, I have to see, to look at it. Uh, Aaron's going to try and beat you. Attention. Oh, hold well on, hold well on. Yeah. Lovely. And I hear you can read more. About the extension and also download the two examples that you can import and what sort of cost is it uh, 79 euro and uh, mm -hmm. you can install it on all the sites that you have brilliant Uh, Mark's link. Oh, I don't know where that is. So someone's asking for Mark's link. Let me see if I've got that open. Oh, that's brilliant. That's really, really good. I mean, we've got two really good productive tools here. The the one that Mark went through, um, which I think is is really useful for those that want to go quick to market. If, if a developer has set it up and allow someone to do it with a spreadsheet, and then yours to simplify the whole back end area, it's just and you know just really nice way of making it easier for someone um not confusing them but also safeguarding it so they don't make the flipping errors um and the nice thing i really like is the fact you can make some of the fields mandatory because like um i use keywords to keywords are pretty much dead in in google but of course they're really useful because you can use keywords with the um, core module uh, in your article and then you can say um, you may be interested in other articles um, and just by putting keywords in they will link all the articles together so if you put the keyword um, herbs in one article and herbs in another it will show the other article at the bottom of your article in that module so I always try and get people to fill in the keywords so that the articles then have intern lots of internal links and they always forget so being able to make it mandatory is brilliant. Well, thank you for that. Thank you both. Thanks.